What up, guys? Myron Gaines here, my boy Connor Murphy. Today, we're going to go through Connor's history, his fucking escalation into the YouTube sphere. You guys are going to really like this one. This is going to be great. Let's get into it, baby. So what up, Connor? How you doing, man? Good, dude. How are you, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Welcome to the show, man. This is going to be a good one, a good one, a good one. Um, So for the guys out there that are wondering, uh, you guys are probably like, man, like, what, what's going on here? How'd you, Myron, what, what do you, how'd you get this guy on? And I'll tell you guys a little bit of history. So um, Connor's good friends with my coach, uh, Brandon Carter. And as you guys know, I've had Brandon on the show as well. And uh, Brandon pretty much is like responsible for me starting a business, helping me, helping me out with the YouTube. He's helped me out with like course launches, all this other stuff. Brandon's a great coach. Uh, and, you know, he teaches guys how to start fitness businesses, et cetera. And uh, Connor is a business partner of his for a while. You know, they've done some really great work together, made a lot of money <laughs> uh, and they've been really successful. So uh, through, you know, those channels, I was able to get through to Connor and, you know, he was happy to come on the show. And uh, quite frankly, guys, this is why it's so important to get coaches, you know, pay money to be around successful people so that you can get uh, a hold of them. And, you know, obviously, Connor is a very successful digital marketer with, uh, you know, his YouTube channel, um, sponsorships, et cetera. And he's done very well for himself. So uh, this is definitely going to be a good interview. A lot of people are going to enjoy this one. So, uh, Connor, can you like introduce yourself to like the audience, uh, what you do, who you, uh, where you live, all this other stuff? Yeah, man. So what's up, guys? I'm Connor. Uh, most people would probably know me for some weird douchebaggery stunts that I pull on YouTube. I'll take my shirt off and interact with girls. And that's kind of how I got popular. So I have like, uh, what, I guess 4 million across a couple different YouTube channels, 4 million subs. And yeah, started a few years ago. And yeah, still still making those YouTube videos. I'm actually living in Austin right now. So I recently moved back. That's actually where the whole YouTube thing started. And yeah, just chilling in Austin um, and making some some content right now. So yeah. So for the people that are wondering, Connor, um, so where'd you grow up? How old are you? Can you tell us a little bit about like, uh, you know, your upbringing for, uh, through your adolescence and teen years? Yeah, man. So I was actually born in Michigan and then raised like 10 years in Michigan, 10 years in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Midwest kid. Um, and um, yeah, it was a, it was a great upbringing. No complaints. I had a, a pretty decent childhood, um, especially like within the family sphere. It was great. Um, the only adversity I would say were um, I guess like the bullies and stuff. And that's actually kind of, we can talk about that later, but that's kind of what led me to, get into fitness and, and kind of made me who I am today. So I, I wouldn't even consider that a negative. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, so I'm, I just turned 26 a um, oh, couple weeks ago, young. actually. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll talk, well, we could talk about that because um, I know with me, same thing. You know, I got bullied when I was younger and, you know, the, the, that motivated me to get in the gym because I, I was very skinny. Were you skinny or were you fat when you were growing up as a kid? You know, man, I, I was never really skinny. I mean, if you had to pick between skinny and fat, like I was, I was, I was skinny. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I was. Ne I'm, not, I'm never skinny. It's just like smaller um, than I am now, or mm -hmm. than I was back then. Okay. And um, yeah, so I, I get you could call me a skinny kid, I guess. Yeah, no, man, I I, I always grew up uh, skinny, and I feel like that's a big reason why a lot of guys get in the gym in the first place is it, it's typically to combat some kind of bullying or to get girls, and then. Yeah, yeah. You know, start working out more and you actually start developing the habits, et cetera, you realize, man, I don't really, this is because <laughs> if you're just going to work out for chicks, like it's never going to be enough to keep you motivated. So, um, so can you tell us how, um, <clears throat> how you, uh, did, where'd you go to school by the way? Did you do undergrad or? Yeah, I did undergrad at a, a Southwestern university. So that's actually what brought me to Austin. Um, okay. Southwestern is just like 20 minutes North of here. Ninety seconds. So. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. So I started actually filming in Austin because I was. That's when I started. YouTube was during college. Gotcha. Gotcha. And that's the blog talk radio in the background. Let me end that real fast. Right. Um. So, uh. Yeah. And Thank I'm looking you here at your channel. Blog talk radio. Goodbye. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to open up the phone lines at the end. Don't worry. You guys will be able to talk to Connor and ask him questions because I know people are probably going to want to come in, call in, and ask. So 
Here, I have one of your videos pulled up here, actually. And uh, this video right here has 62 million views, which is like... Uh, I know what one that is. And oh, yeah. For the people out here that might not know who uh, Connor Murphy is, because... Um, I, and we're going to talk a little bit more about your YouTube channel about, and how you got started with this. But, like, you were definitely, like, one of the first uh, prank channels that incorporated fitness that I could think of. I can't remember anybody else that was doing this type of thing back then. Yeah. Uh, this event is for people that want to get into real estate. It wasn't just, here's how. Got ads. Houses. It looks like we're getting you some money, bro. Hell yeah. Let's watch this whole ad, dude. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> dude, yeah. That was, I mean, that was one of my favorite videos to film, man. Man, that was back when I was, that was like my peak shape. Back when mm -hmm. I had thick, luscious hair. Not as long, but thick and luscious. Those were, that was my prime, dude. That was, that yeah. was, yeah, man. Brings oh, back man. the memories. Yeah, no, dude. I I remember I saw this and I saw your Omega ones, like where you would like uh for the people for the viewers out there that don't know, it's like kind of like a chatting service, like chat roulette, I think it is. And it, like he'll be on the camera and he'll look like a nerd. Then all of a sudden he'll just like strip down. I remember uh Z's used to do that all the time too back in the day. Shout out yeah. to RIP to him. Yeah, it's funny, you know. Um, it's interesting because a lot of people think that Z's did it in person. He never did it in person. What what it is, I mean, people literally took footage of him and kind of threw it up there right mm. and got good reactions yeah yeah so i guess he never personally did it um i that, that i think that's why my videos went so viral i was like the first person really to do that in person like yeah. live yeah you know and then a lot of people started doing it and so those were the first videos that actually like took off that actually got me a following so i remember actually letting this youtube channel post my video um, my omega video and it went viral on their channel i mean it got like two million something views in like a week and it got me my first like 10k subs and then from there it was just it was easy you know that's the hardest part is getting that initial following and after that you just let the youtube algorithm take care of itself you know so that per segues perfectly into what i was going to ask so what did you do before youtube what were you what were you doing before and then like when did you uh decide to like start doing it like full time yeah i was just in college man i was a college student majoring in computational math and econ and i ended up finishing you know just to competition math <laughs> yeah, comp computational math is actually like half math, half computer oh, science. Okay. Yeah, computational math. So Wait, yeah, man, competitive math, uh, competition math. I was going to say. Uh, oh, man. Okay. No, no, so like half math, half computer science, and then econ. So it's just a good like major combination to hopefully get me like a good business, you know, corporate job after college. And the closer it got to you know me graduating, it was like my junior year, which was it was time to start applying for you know, at least internships, if not actual jobs after college. And I just, I was like looking around and I was like, it, it, it like, it was the first time it really hit me. I was like, I'm going to fucking hate my life, dude. Like dude, working some corporate job as like some d data analyst, like this is going to suck. Like yeah. I never really thought about it before. I was just kind of going through the motions very like unconsciously, just like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Cool. Like um, I'm doing well in school, going to make some money, but then it hit me like I'm really not going to be enjoying life at all. And so I was like, oh, shit. And so I was like, damn, I, I kind of went to like a mini depression. And I was like, like, what am I going to do? Like, so I started thinking about how I could make money. And, you know, it's like, what are you good at? What will people pay for? You know, what do you like doing? And, you know, I one thing was like golf. So I was like, um, I was on the golf team. I was like, okay, maybe I could break through, play professionally, which I'm halfway still trying, like as kind of a, a side thing for fun. So that's actually still going on. And the second thing was like fitness. Like I always had like a good physique mm -hmm. and I was, yeah, I, I had like a great physique. I was like known for that. You know, I was known for having like a good body. And at the time I just did it, you know, we can, we can talk about this, but yeah, again, like I was, I was bullied, wanted to get respect from guys and girls. So I was working on my physique since I was 11 years old. And it was, I mean, yeah, it was like the top 99%, you know? And I was like, I stumbled across YouTubers like Jeff Side and stuff, people Shout like that. Side, man. <laughs> yeah, he was actually, to be honest, like, I mean, him and Z's are where I got my ideas, you know, because I, I do stuff like them. I just kind of put my own creative twist on it. So they're, oh, same. they're, they're who actually kind of like implanted that, that stuff in my mind. I was like, okay, cool. This is stuff like that people want to see. I know that this content will work and I can make it even like better. I can put my own, make it unique, you know? And so I was like, oh shit, this is like something that could actually, I could build a business out of. You know, I actually tried fitness modeling for a while and I realized like, 
like no you don't make money off of it like it's, it's like <laughs> no like literally like zero people do i mean maybe a tiny bit but nothing substantial nothing worth doing uh, fitness modeling yeah it's, it's just not really worth doing maybe for fun or maybe to like you get on the cover of a magazine right and then you can use it to promote your business or something right but you're not going to make a lot of money just strictly through fitness modeling i, I mean even like the maybe the top like one percent but not like i don't even think they're making a lot but um so yeah i decided like i was gonna put out this content and build a business out of it and i, I wasn't like i really didn't have any doubts it was, it was it was awesome you know i wasn't like oh shit, is this gonna work is this gonna not? i was like this has to work to an extent you know like it has to you you know like I, I am going to gain a certain amount of, of following. And at the time I was like, and then I can sell some workout plans, some diet plans and it has to work to an extent. I don't know how much, but the goal was like, I wanted like a hundred K subs by the time I graduated. And I thought that'd be enough to start a business. Um, it ended up being like 600 K or something by the time I graduated. And I realized that you don't even, you don't even need close to a hundred K to start a business at all. No. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how it, it got started. So, um, cause you said a couple things there that like uh, resonate very strongly with me. Um, same here, man. Uh, growing up when I was younger, about 10 years ago, Z's was huge for all the viewers out here. Uh, you know, l l Google a guy named ZYZZ is, he was an Australian bodybuilder that uh, tragically died in 2011. And he kind of made, I feel like he was a big part of the, the uh, like aesthetic bodybuilding type movement, like getting younger guys out there, lifting weights, uh, to look good. Uh, you know, for improving because he was a nerd and he like transformed and a lot that resonated with a lot of people, you know, shout out to his brother, Syed Sergovich, um, and Jeff side as well. They all started coming out around this time. And then you were the first guy I noticed that was like taking the aesthetics and like making it like fun, like on a big level on YouTube. Cause like, um, back then I didn't know anybody that was doing, I mean, see people are doing it now. They've kind of taken your formula and, tr and, and try to run with it. But, uh, you were the first guy I know that like took it where, okay, I'm going to like prank girls uh for with like aesthetics like no no one had really done that on youtube so that was like huge uh when you started doing that so i'll, I'll ask this connor like uh from that first video we just saw with 62 million views um how long did it take uh from that point uh because i'm assuming that was like your first video that you like shot and like actually like was like okay I'm, I'm gonna do this uh to realize okay this is like what i'm gonna do and uh you built up to your, your channel to a point where you were like i don't need a job anymore how long did that take you Mm, yeah, I'm not sure if I can remember the exact date. I mean, it was like, again, this is the thing. I really didn't have any doubts. Like I knew it was going to work to an extent. And I just had a feeling that like I was going to go all out um, and run with it from the very start. I was kind of <laughs> really that confident. But I think when and obviously it just kind of gradually got more and more confident, like because it's not like, oh, there's an on and off switch where you can boom, like this is your job or, or it's not, it's like, you can, it, I was like, it's going to be my job anyway. It's either I'm going to be poor and it's going to be my job or I'm going to be like <laughs> rich and it's going to be my job, you know? Cause I remember it was the summer, the first year I started, I think I started, I believe I started at the beginning of a year. I think it was, uh, geez, 2015, 26, no, 2016, something like that. Mm -hmm. Pro probably 2016. Don't quote me on that. Might be wrong. But I started at the beginning of the year. I remember posting on Instagram. And then a few months into the year, I started posting on YouTube. Oh, it must have been 2016. I don't know. I remember the summer of 2016. I had a shitty internship. And I remember I was doing a bodybuilding competition. That was the only thing that mattered at the time. I was completely just like not doing a good job at my internship because I was focused on the bodybuilding competition. First time I cut down, I was irritable. I, I was feeling absolutely awful. And... I remember that time I had 40,000 subs and mm. I was about to do a competition. And I remember thinking, you know, fuck this internship, dude. Like I'm, I'm not going to be working at something like this. Like I'm going to be doing YouTube. I remember cause I was like, at that time I had 40 K subs and I'd already had a few videos go viral, like a few Omega videos. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't really, I don't think at that time I had really done any, well, I kind of, I took my shirt off in a mall, but I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing the, the videos on sixth street yet. Yeah, But um, at that point, I knew I was like, fuck this internship, dude. I'm going to be doing this full time. And so that's why I didn't really care. I didn't do a good job because I knew at that time with 40,000 subs that summer that I was I was like for sure going to be doing it full time. Yeah. So yeah. Um, 
Now I'll say this, obviously I already knew people were going to ask this in the chat, everything like that. You know, uh, I put out a lot of, I put out fitness content and I put out guys, I put out content for men, you know, to be more attractive to women with, with a red lens, so to speak, <laughs> I'm going to keep a YouTube clean for the algorithm, uh, with a, with a red lens. And people are, are asking in the chat, Hey, does Connor subscribe to that methodology of thinking? And what, what are his thoughts on intersexual dynamics dealing with the opposite gender? Cause obviously you're, you're very good with the women, uh, I'm sure you've met a, b a bunch of hot chicks doing these uh, videos and, and just in the fitness industry in general. Well, what's your take on it? Um, remind me, dude. I get all the, we'll, we'll use the words lenses. I guess I know the word I'm not supposed to use. Yeah, yeah. What, what is, is the red, is that basically like a, be a masculine alpha guy and you're going to get girls? Pretty much that like, you know, that the narrative that we've been sold as men, that girls are sugar and spice and everything nice is, is BS. You know what I'm saying? That like girls are actually... Uh, there's unflattering realities about how women may select and that women are just as promiscuous as men, you know, basic stuff like that. Like it's not yours, it's just your turn. You shouldn't get married. Like that type of thing. What's your views on it? Um, in on those, uh, I guess as far as like that side of the, the, the YouTube sphere. Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely dude. I mean, everyone's human. Everyone, uh, you know, they kind of have a, a little dark side to it. I don't even think of it as a dark side, dude. I just think of it as being human. You know, a lot of people, I, we all have these like parts of us that we don't really like or that society deems is, is kind of like bad or negative, but I don't think we should. Like, I think that we should more just embrace like who we are as humans and just, you know, like in, enjoy life and enjoy how we are. You know, I think a lot of people try and like hide their personalities and shit and yeah, girls do that for sure. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, they're human, so they do have um, like a dark side to them as well. But again, like I, I if you embrace it, and you learn to work with it, you can have a lot of success with women, you know, and you don't play that victim mentality. You don't be like, Oh, the girl, what a bitch. Like, uh, she's, she doesn't like me. I'm doing everything right. She, no, dude, like you're, you're thinking of, of the game wrong. Like think of, uh, just think of life as like, like it's like a game and you have to go and win based on this set of rules. Like don't ask for the rules to change. It's like, you're playing a freaking uh, basketball game and you go up to the ref and you're like, Hey, these, I don't like these rules. Can you change them instead yeah. of playing the freaking basketball game? It's, it's so, it's, 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 it's like stupid when you really think about it. It's, it's so dumb. Like if you use an analogy like that, but that's how people are trying to play this game of life. And so no, absolutely. Like, yeah. Like, um, I mean, when it comes to girls, like there are certain things, there are certain things that are very common among all female minds, uh, even among all human minds. And you can, if, if you learn that and you learn the psychology behind it and you act accordingly, like you put on the right behavior, you can have a lot of success with them for sure. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, not, I'm not saying it doesn't matter, but regardless of, of how you look or how much even money you have, I'm not saying that doesn't help, but you can have a lot of success with women based on a, a lot of other things for sure. Absolutely, man. And I'm going to have to like agree with that a thousand percent. Like my thing is, I think guys should, you know, operate with that red awareness. But at the same time, like you don't want to be a misogynist. Like a lot of guys in this space, quite frankly, just hate women. You know what I mean? And instead of complaining about the rules, you just got to improve and rise up to what's required. Because at the end of the day, girls date up. You know what I'm saying? So like for you to sit there and complain and say, oh, you know, I hate women. All this other BS. Like a lot of guys are just butthurt on, in the sphere. And it, the, the reality is you want to you have to become better if you want to get chicks. That's what it is. Like girls make their own money now. It is what it is. Uh, you know, the days of making $30,000 and driving your Kia Sophia, those days are done. So you actually have to self-improve as a man nowadays to get the sex life you want. A lot of guys don't want to accept that. Um, so I, I'm, I agree a thousand percent. So I'll say this. <laughs> so uh, right now, are you like dating any chicks? Are you single? Are you uh, playing playing the field, uh, chatting out? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm actually not, dude. So this is interesting. Um, now, I'm sure we'll talk about the whole spiritual side of things in a little bit, but yeah, well, yeah. before that, I was like, I was like on a rampage, dude. I was, I was definitely like sex addicted, dude. You know, a lot of people don't talk about that side of the sphere because we go from these guys who don't have a good sex life. Yep. And then a lot of times, you know, you learn this, uh, the, the psychology tricks to get girls, you become more alpha of a guy and all of a sudden you're having the sex life that you want but it can go too far. Like the pendulum can swing to the other end. Yep. And a lot of people I know, including me, and I didn't even really want to call it this man. Um, because I was like, it, 
it, it's like, dude, it's, it's like, it's sex. It's, it's this awesome thing that's supposed to be good. Like you're supposed to like get it as much as you're, we're men. Like we're supposed to get it as much as we can, you know? And it's, it's yeah. just a good thing. We're, but like, dude, I was 100% like hardcore, like addicted. Like it was like controlling my life. And you had it a was like every day, like a new chick over every single day. Like that's like, yeah. Stuff. Or like multiple. And it's like, if I didn't, it brought down my mood, you know, mm -hmm. I was like, and yeah, it was this endless cycle of just, that's all that was on my mind. That was all that I was thinking about. And yeah, it was, it, I didn't realize at the time. Cause it seemed kind of like, I mean, there were ups and downs with man, like just like any addiction, dude, like when you're on that high, it's like dope, you know? Yep. And, but yeah. And I didn't really realize it until after the fact, after I really did the, the 40 day fast, cause I actually did 70 days semen retention, mm. which means no sex or jerking off or anything 70 days. So it was the 40 days and then uh, it was a few days before and then many days after as well. And I realized like during that time it, it went away, you know, like mm. my sex drive completely went away. And I think part of it was because the lower testosterone levels, cause I literally didn't eat for 40 days. Yep. But also when you go a long time without like ejaculating, it, it, there's there's a point where you get like hornier and hornier and hornier, right? Mm -hmm. But then after a certain point, usually it's around seven days or something. Yeah. It actually your sex drive like starts going down, and it's really interesting. And so, you know, I, it was really only like ten days in or something, and I all of a sudden felt my sex drive going away, and it was this amazing like freeing thing, mm. right? And so, because at one point at, at this point, like my life wasn't controlled by sex anymore. I was like, whoa, this is dope. I, I literally just like beat an addiction and I didn't realize it. Right. And so now it's been three months or something after the fast. And I'm really just like, I'm enjoying, it's not like I'm going to be a celibate the rest of my life. And I have yeah. broken that 70 day semen retention streak with a girl, uh -huh. but, um, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm still, I'm really taking it slow and I'm really just enjoying life where and where it's sex isn't controlling my life and like i'm really really enjoying it so i'm to the point where and again i'm, I'm gonna like gradually kind of go back into it because i, I want to have a, a sex life for sure but i i really don't want it to be like compulsive mm -hmm. and so i'm gonna slowly go back into it i don't want there to be any sort of rush or anything like that and we'll just see how it goes like i'm at the point where right now i'm not really pursuing anything and i'm enjoying life like i have a lot of other projects that i'm doing i'm really just enjoying life without it um, but then again, if a naked girl showed up at my door right now, like I would 100% <laughs> bang her, you know what I mean? Like, so, so it's kind of like that. Um, but so that's where my dating life is at right now. You call me at a weird place because yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm good. sure, in a, I'm sure in a couple months there'll be, it'll, I, the, the, my vision is like in a few months, it's going to be a balance between the two, you know, I'm going to have some sort of sex life, but it's not going to be some compulsive thing i want to be able to have a sex life but not be like controlled by it you know yeah so that's kind of the goal and i want to so i got a quick question because i know people in the chat are going to want to know this so when you were at the peak and you were just like straight up you know you're you're doing your thing uh what how were you sourcing were you using like uh we're using instagram game were you cold approaching we're using social circle uh obviously you're in the fitness industry a lot of attractive women in, in the industry uh you know you got some movers and shakers in there how were you sourcing most of your your leads when back then when you were like on on top of it yeah so i'll tell you how i was i'm not saying this is the most efficient either like one thing i wasn't doing i probably should have just been like cold dming hot instagram chicks you know but i wasn't really doing that but what i was doing was was working for me and it was getting me um more chicks than i could handle um so it was i mean one it was like tinder and bumble okay online dating so, yep. okay. yeah a, a lot from there for sure and usually, I mean, that's everything is moved over to Instagram, right? Yeah. A big, a big key is like, I never ask for a girl's number when I actually want to talk to them. Like I will for the video. Cause people like that. They're like, Oh, we got the girl's number. Cool. But if I'm actually trying to get a girl, I, I get their Instagram because you move them over to Instagram. Now you have a whole freaking social media platform working for you, right? Like the girl is going to be on Instagram. She's going to see you. You're in her mind more and you're actually a profile with pictures rather than just a number, yep. you know what I mean? And yep. so it, it it emotionally triggers her way, way, way more to actually get her Instagram um, and for you guys to communicate on there. 
And so I, I always get the Instagram and move it over there. So online dating, I'll really quick move it over to Instagram. Yep. And then also I would do a lot of cold approach, but like um, some of it was cold approach when I would like go out with my friends and stuff. Definitely like, I mean, a lot, like actually at, at the peak, what am I saying? Like my friends and I would go out like four days a week. <laughs> like it was a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it, I think even more success came from like, I would go down to San Diego and film YouTube videos. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I would just, I started, I used to not do this. I, when I started out on YouTube, also I was not into any sort of like, I, am I allowed to say the word game? Uh, fuck. I think I just like, I fucked right, this for YouTube. Fine, go ahead. It's all uh, good. Yeah, yeah. The game is fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. But, um, <laughs> so I was way more into game back then. Or, I mean, I wasn't into game at the start of the YouTube video uh, at the start of me filming YouTube videos, but then I gradually got more into it. And also I was like, oh, I'm going to keep it, you know, uh, just business oriented. You know, I'm, I'm not going to call and or text any girls from my YouTube videos. But then um, or like a while went by, a couple of years went by and I was like, fuck that. That's dumb. Like whatever. Like, dude, just live life. Like you might as well. Like you're, you're, you built this YouTube shit for a reason. You might as well have fun with it. Yep. And so there, then I was, I actually switched over my main focus. And this is actually when. I was having the most fun with YouTube. I switched over the over the focus from me getting content and you know for the business, and I was like, dude, I'm just gonna go down there and film and like have fun and like try and get girls, and then whatever content I get, I'm just I'll just post it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in San Diego, my main focus was like, dude, I'm just gonna like get girls while I'm I'm filming, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And so that was my that was the new thing. Like I would go down to San Diego on weekends. A lot of times I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't even get a hotel or anything. Like I would just be like, that was like the most fun thing, dude. I would go down to San Diego and I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to see what happens. Like if I have to sleep in my car, I have to sleep in my car. Yep. I never had, I never had to sleep in my car, yeah. but um, dude, it was like, it was fun. It was fun. Like it was an adventure, you know? And yeah. so that's what I was doing. I was just filming videos and hanging out and like getting girls. And like, I would also throughout the week, like I would, I would see a girl in a video. I, you know, obviously you, you try and, you know, hang out with her that night after the video. But, um, also like I would try and set up dates like the next day, you know, if, if it didn't work out that night or whatever. And so that was kind of the thing is like, I'd weekends in San Diego, getting girls and filming YouTube. And that was like, that was like really fun. And again, I think it was kind of looking back on it, it was a little like compulsive and there was some, it wasn't that all that healthy, but it was definitely a blast for sure. Yeah. And, and, uh, we got a super chat here from my boy and my business partner, CEO lifestyle. See Connor knows Instagram is a new resume and be biggest dating app. Yeah, guys, we're, we got an Instagram course coming. where We're going to teach you guys how to source girls solely on Instagram. Obviously Connor's talking about it right now. Uh, if you, the power of Instagram is crazy, you know what I mean? Like it is the best, it is the biggest dating app if you know how to use it correctly. So shout out to Fresh Prince CEO Connor knows as well. Uh, so, so you were driving, and at the time you were in LA, right? You had already left Austin. You moved to LA, and then you were going down. You were taking that. What is this? It? Like a right. two-hour drive, if I'm not mistaken, from LA. Yeah, it's like two and a half. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about. Uh. So you guys know that the, the uh, Connor's history on game, which is thank you for that. Uh. So Connor, can, can you tell us a little bit about your transformation? Uh. Your spiritual. What led you to it? Uh. How how it was, and then the forty day fast, etc. Like the whole evolution of your change. Cause obviously you've kind of like done uh, a little bit of a 180 as far as like, um, switching things up. So I think people would love to. Yeah. Hear. A lot of people think it was a 180, but it was never a 180. That's the mm -hmm. thing. So it's like on the, on the surface, it seems like it's a 180. You go from this dude who's like picking up these girls to like, um, taking a shirt off online and then to the spiritual guy who like meditates all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, people think that those things are like mutually exclusive. They're not like, okay. um, at all. In fact, um, yeah, they're not, it, it depends on your mindset behind it. Like, if you're that guy who goes and takes off his shirt and like gets women, he, he's like very identified with that. You know, he's um, like, that's who he is. Uh, he's, he's, that's his identity. He's this alpha guy who gets girls. Like then um, those two things are, are mutually exclusive or unless you fix something. Right. Mm -hmm. But I was never really like, I was never as attached to my, physique and looks as people thought, I guess. Cause again, I just really started to build a business. Like I knew from the very start that, yeah, like a physique would, would help and stuff. Well, at, when I was like 11 years old, I thought the physique was everything like get, get a good body. I'll get a bunch of girls. But as I, I was always very socially aware and I just realized, realized like as I went into high school and, and college and stuff that 
oh shit, like I have a great body. I'm not getting as many girls as my friends who aren't nearly as like attractive as me. And so I'm like, okay, you know, the, I mean, the body's not that big of a deal. Like there's a lot more that goes into um, just being an all around, it's, it's really just being an all around good, genuine, like successful alpha like guy, just a, a dope dude, you know? <laughs> um, and so I was never really too attached to the physique. And I mean, the spiritual thing, it really all started. I, I just, I kind of had everything, man, that I wanted. I had like a, you know, I had this good business that I built. I had this freedom. I had enough more girls than I'd ever had before. And I wasn't really happy. Like I was not happier than I was before, like at all. In fact, I was a little more depressed because I kind of got to the place that I wanted to be and my happiness didn't increase and it bummed me out. And so I was like, fuck, like, what am I going to do? And so then I was like, okay, there's a definitely a lot more to happiness than just being successful and, and, and getting the physique you want and all that superficial shit. And this was about, I mean, this was like a, a year to two years or something. I mean, after I moved to LA. So yeah, a year and a half, two years after I started the whole YouTube thing. And that's really when I started, like, I was like, I started getting like meditation and stuff and, you know, and at first I thought that meditation was just some, like, like I love the science behind it. You know, I, I, I was, I was the kind of guy who was super skeptical about everything, like esoteric shit, not. Nah. I was like the logical, practical dude, right? So meditation, as a kid, I was like, this is weird. This is some Eastern esoteric shit. Like, I'm not going to worry about it. But all of a sudden, research started coming out where, oh, if you meditate, it literally like shrinks the amygdala, which uh, shrinks, like it's the, the fear response, right? And so you'll become like less uh, scared. You'll decrease anxiety like there's all this research coming out like scientific shit about meditation I was like oh I'm gonna get into this you know this can actually might help improve my happiness and it's it's funny because like this happens with a lot this is how the world is is really gonna change it's very interesting right it's like people are gonna start out doing this shit because it's very scientific it's scientific and they're trying to like improve it's like self-improvement right um but that is like the the least benefit of meditation that's like that's the equivalent like <laughs> meditating to like improve your yourself like to um to become like less anxious or, or all this bullshit that's like the equivalent of like hiring a prostitute to like play video games with okay <laughs> like meditation in the long run it can fucking like you can reach fucking nirvana like you can become enlightened i'm not saying like I, I am or anything. I'm just saying like you can have a spiritual awakening. A lot of people have no idea what the fuck that is. They don't even, they have no idea. And I didn't either, but basically you can get to a place after. And again, like I could talk about this shit for hours. No one's going to be able to understand what I'm talking about from what I'm saying right now. So basically mm -hmm. you just have to go out and like experience it, I guess, but you can get to a place after paying attention to enough to your experience where, where it liberates you. Like we, we go out in day to day life and we, there's some stimulus, right. And it has an effect on us mm -hmm. either like a positive effect and a negative effect. And what we don't realize is this is some weird programming in our mind that's running on autopilot. Okay. So you're walking down the street and some dude says, Hey, uh, asshole, you look like shit. And all of a sudden it's an automatic trigger in your brain that puts you and it has an emotional response, right? When you pay attention enough to experience um, and through mindfulness and meditation, eventually you can get to a point where that does not happen, where every little sensation or thought that happens in your life, you can come to a place of equanimity and you can realize the emptiness of those actual thoughts and emotions and sensations and realize that those thoughts and emotions and sensations are actually only, they only have an effect on you because they're based on all this other shit. It's like stories that you're telling yourself in your, in your mind. And actually the raw sensation or the raw thought isn't, it, it has no effect. It's empty, right? It comes from emptiness and goes back into emptiness. And it, it's just, it, it's nothing, right? And it doesn't have to, it have to affect you. And this isn't something that like, oh, oh, Connor, I get that. You just said that cool, right? Like, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to realize, yeah, there's a sensation. It's empty. No, no, no. This is something that you actually experience. And then all of a sudden, it, it's like this great, like epiphany, like, holy shit. 
You know what I mean? It's something like that. It's, it's, it's not like anything else in life where you go and like you do the research, you read about it, and then it's like, oh, cool, I understand. It's not like some religion. It's not some dogma. It's some shit that you actually experience, right? Okay. And so, yeah, I'm sorry. That was like a huge long tangent, right? But no, no, no. essentially- it's- because here's the thing, a lot of people don't understand it. Even myself, you know, I, I'm man enough to admit that I was incorrect. I thought like, oh, well, Connor did like a huge transformation. He's a different man. But in reality, what well, you know, it wasn't that much of a change. It's just interpreting things differently. So, no, thank you for that. Um, real quick, I'll go with the Super Chats. Um, Mike S. with the Super Sticker 199, thank you for the support. Uh, we got to, to there with uh, 123 with this SEK. Fifty dollars. I don't know what that is, but thank you so much for your support. I got to look that up. And then uh, Robertson Dennis, keep up the good work. Myron with Myron with the Canadian six ninety nine. Thank you so much. And then Tudari again with another fifty. Why do you think most fitness experts don't recommend a bro split? We will answer that at the end, guys. Don't worry. Uh, we'll do a Q and A at the end. And I just opened up the phone lines, which I'll put below. But with that said, uh, sorry, Connor. Go ahead. So, um, so, so you, so you basically you, you weren't you were at a point in your life where you weren't necessarily happy, even though like on the surface. You know, obviously, you're a good looking guy making a lot of money living in L.A., uh, you know, um, basically running a YouTube channel, doing really well. And you just like just didn't didn't feel that same sense of satisfaction. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll wrap it up. So I was just kind of no, no, I, I was I was I was like I, people kind of need to understand that, like, yeah, meditation is cool, but there's an incredible liberating experience. You know, there's a reason why Buddhist monks will meditate for 50 freaking years. Right. It is to get to a place of it is the ultimate place of true happiness. In fact, it's it's the only place of true happiness. Like there's a lot of other things that you can do to, and I wouldn't say ha- happiness is the wrong word. It's really like peace, equanimity. People have different uh, words for happiness, but it's it's like the best place you can be. And you, a lot of uh, incredible realizations come from it, right? You, you like lose uh, essentially the sense of self. Like we all think that we're this mind and body, right? And, and that's who we are. That's our identity, right? And it's our identification with that that actually leads to suffering. And you can realize through uh, this mindfulness process that that's not the case and that you are actually the emptiness in which all this happens. You are actually the, the consciousness itself. And it's a realization you can have. Again, it's not some dogma. It's a realization that you can actually have. And so that this, and this incredible journey that you can be on. And I had no idea about any of this shit until mm-hmm. I had an incredible psychedelic experience after, after about three years of meditation. I was looking for more and I started to realize like, oh shit, there, there's something to this. I realized that a lot of spiritual people actually like uh, do psychedelics because it can it can show them certain things about the nature of consciousness and and elevate their practice even more. And so I, after a psychedelic experience, I kind of realized like, whoa, I, I, I had a glimpse of this incredible liberation that you can have. And, and, all, and it was the first time that I, you know, like, I no longer feared death. I felt that I was more than just my mind, my body, all this amazing stuff. And so that just sent me down the path even more hardcore. You know, I started, I was meditating, you know, 10, 20 minutes a day up until that. But now, geez, I'm meditating for hours a day, you know. Mm. And so kind of after I had that experience, um, you know, I I had that glimpse, I, I guess you could say, I was just like, holy shit, like this is like everything. Like this this transcends everything. Like fuck trying to get a good physique. Fuck trying to get like money. Like this, if you go down the spiritual past far enough and really reach the end of it, I mean, geez, it doesn't matter. Literally, it does not matter at all anything in the physical realm, what you do with your life. Like you will be content and liberated. It, it was, I was like, what the fuck? Like it's some crazy shit that I just didn't realize was possible. And so I was like, wow, you know, like I'm going to, I'm kind of going to go out. I want to, first of all, I want to tell people about this and and help them. Right. I want to kind of help them get on the spiritual path. And so I want to create a YouTube channel. Right. And that's my channel. Connor Murphy talks. I kind of, it used to be an old podcast channel and now it's more of a personal development slash spiritual channel. And I was like, yo, like, um, I just had this idea that I needed to do this fast. Um, after I made a bunch of, I I went kind of like crazy, but there was like, there's so much to get into. Um, I guess you'll have to go back and watch my, my YouTube videos, but yeah, a lot of crazy shit happened. Put out a bunch of crazy YouTube videos. They're all, we're supposed to serve a purpose. Right. Um, but yeah, they definitely seem a little crazy for sure, but they're all supposed to, I guess, have meaning behind them. Um, if you go and watch them. 
But um, after that, I was like, yeah, I want to expand people's minds even more. And also for me, I want to see what my mind is capable of, you know? And so I want to do this 40 day fast. And about that next. So no, perfect. Perfect. I was just going to ask about that next about the 40 day fast. Yeah. So I, I really just want to expand people's minds. And also, I mean, a 40 day fast, there's supposed to be a lot of spiritual benefits that you can get as well. Now I didn't know exactly why now I have a better idea why, and actually knowing what I know now, I probably could have gotten more out of the spiritual or out of the 40 day fast than I really did. Um, but you know, it's all good. But so, yeah, I wanted to expand people's minds. And that's why I decided to live stream the whole thing because I wanted to prove that I did it. Not to prove that I did did it to be like, oh, like I'm the man, like, yeah, I can not eat for 40 days. Like, no, no, no. I did it so like people could realize what's possible because you ask a normal person like, yo, uh, can you not eat for 40 days? Like what? No, you'll die. You know, the average person, right? And, but no, it's, it's a very possible thing. Like I did it. I live stream literally every second. So you can go look, I lost 40 pounds, uh, over 40 pounds in 40 days. Um, and yeah, so it was really just to, I, I want to do it for the good of my channel, you know, so it can expand their, their minds and maybe help get them on the spiritual route. But I also want to see what would happen. Like, cause a lot of, you know, uh, what Jesus, Moses, um, a lot of, a lot of, old philosophers, I think like, like Plato and stuff like that, they all did 40 day fast for religious or like philosophical reasons, right? So like spiritual reasons, you know? And yeah, I just felt like it, it was just this idea that came up. I was like, dude, I, I don't know. I have to do this. Like, I can't really explain it. It was, it was just one day I was like, holy shit. Like I, yeah, I want to do a 40 day fast. There's this weird thought that came to me from like nowhere, you know? And yeah, so I just did it. <laughs> So when you were doing the fast, because I was tuning in periodically uh, when you were, when you were doing it, like I, I would, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd click the swipe up and I'd go in and I'd look and I'd see, wow, he's still doing it. This is crazy. Um, what are, what are some things that you learned, uh, I guess uh, from doing the fast and then like, what are things that people don't know about fasting? Like that, like kind of change Like did, you, did your mindset change completely? Like did your whole view on food change completely? Like what are some things that I guess like people wouldn't anticipate happens from fasting for so long? Yeah. So let me, I guess what I realize now, so this, the spiritual nature behind it is essentially, so this is now, again, I didn't really know this and I didn't really put this into action during the fast, but the spiritual nature behind it, why it's, it's really spiritual can benefit you is because when you start denying yourself things that you want, it it starts fucking with the automatic programming in your brain, you know? So the automatic programming in your brain, the ego, right? So it's like, okay, you want this piece of food, so you don't even think twice, you just get it, right? And then the automatic programming just keeps going. But all of a sudden, when you interrupt that and you're hungry, you want this piece of food and you you stop that shit, then it's all of a sudden you're becoming more conscious and, and your brain actually starts to rewire itself. That's why a lot of times in meditation, people do this, this thing called long determination sitting, where you'll sit and you, you won't move. You literally won't, won't move a muscle for as long as you can. And you'll start having like some pain and stuff and you fight through it and you start trying to realize that that sensation that you have, it can be a sensation or a thought. It's not inherently negative. It's your, your mind that's tricking yourself into thinking that it's negative. So the idea b- behind the fast is like you have this hunger, but you really focus in on the hunger and realize that the hunger, the feeling of hunger is really empty in nature. And it's really just your mind telling itself a story that's leading to the suffering, right? And so that's kind of the idea behind it. I didn't really realize that at the time, which sucked because I probably would have got more out of it. But me, the things that I did learn, um, they're more surface level level things. But like, yeah, I, I realized what hunger actually was. I, I actually realized that hunger was, it was completely mental because I, I would get hungry at, times that didn't make sense. Like I was the least hungry um, the last five days or maybe uh, the last few days of the fast, I got really excited to get food. So I was a little more hungry, but like day like 30 or something, I wasn't really hungry. Um, Day five, four and five, I was extremely hungry. Like it didn't make sense. It was obviously that the hunger wasn't physical because if it was a purely like a physical thing, 
um, you would it would just keep going up, right? Obviously, like hunger just keeps going up. Nah, it wasn't at all it, like that. It was purely mental. I had a horrible time around day 20 because I was like, fuck, dude, it's halfway through. I've gone 20 days without eating. I have 20 more to go. And I just realized how long 20 days is. It felt like forever. And I just started getting like really hungry for like no reason. It was just mental. It was like I was just thinking about food. And so the hunger was it was a complete, it was completely mental the whole time. Like there was no, I, I wasn't physically hungry. It was mental. And so I learned that. And the more I didn't focus on food or I, or I put my attention on food until it went away, right. Um, the, the less I would suffer. But if I kept like thinking about it, kept craving it and just kind of let the mind do what it does, I would just start getting extremely hungry. And so, yeah, afterwards, I mean, I was so, so, so excited to eat for sure. And I'm it sure, definitely yeah. for a while, I mean, still like I, I have a greater appreciation for food in a good way at the start, at the start, it was like, I had an obsession with food. I wasn't like eating a lot because I, I need to be careful refeeding. That's a whole thing. Like you need to be careful when you're refeeding your body. You could literally die if you refeed wrong after a 40 day fast. Mm. But, I, but it was a set obsessive. I mean, I was literally taking, I mean, what? Geez, probably eight hours of the day to just sit there and like nibble on food and just like, just sit there and soak up the pleasure of eating food, like very slowly for like eight hour, eight hours a day. Wow. And yeah, it was like, yeah, it was kind of a, like that was kind of obsessive. And I was like, fuck, okay, now this is kind of obsessive. So I need to chill out. And now I, I really just enjoy food more and I eat it a little slower. I chew it a little more and I like it a little more, you know? Yeah. Um, so I definitely think it had a positive impact, but I'm to the point where like I'm not, I'm spending a couple hours total maybe eating a day, um, mm -hmm. not in eight. But um, so yeah, food's more enjoyable. Um, but Newfound appreciation I, for it, probably. It's a newfound appreciation yeah. for sure. But luckily, like it's not compulsive anymore. Like, yeah, I have a very healthy relationship with food right now that I'm very satisfied with. Nice. So I'll tell you this because people probably are wondering. So, Connor, are you back in the gym? Are you training again? Like, you're gonna get your, you're gonna get back to to beastly shape. So, can you tell the people about uh, what you're currently doing to get back in tip top shape? Yeah, dude, it's it's dope, dude. I, I'm like I'm like so excited about it. Um, because I've been making some awesome progress. We'll see. Ugh. Yeah, the see, back. muscle memory is a real thing, guys. Um, I mean, I'm like just over the past week or two, I, I really upped the calories and I'm, I'm I'm seeing the muscle come on even faster. It's like it's so fun. It's, it's like I'm 15 years old again, making yep. all the gains, you know. And so um, I was like 187 this morning on the scale. Um, I mean, that's 30 pounds up from yeah. – that's 30 pounds up from the end of my fast and it's been less sure, than when 30. you were 137 when you when you were like at no, the 1 157 uh <laughs> yeah 157 now 187 okay and so and it's pretty much all muscle um i mean a lot of water and glycogen obviously from from the fast but the mm -hmm. point is i haven't put on really that much fat not much that i can see maybe a little bit but um it's it's been a lot of lean mass and it's been Super fun. I'm going to do a three month transformation video on my main channel. I think on, uh, oh shit, is that this week or let's see, it's the 19th. I'll probably put it out next week because I think three months is, oh yeah, I think it's been officially three months this Friday or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this Friday I'll do a, uh, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll eat a shit ton, see if I can get up to one, nah, 185 is good, dude. That's 30 pounds in three months. Yeah. It seems like yeah. a good number to promote. Are you six foot or like six, two and three quarters? Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. Sir. Um, but, um, yeah. So I'm going to do a three month transformation. It's pretty, it's, 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 it's an incredible three month transformation. A lot of people like a lot of people haven't seen me up to date. You know, the last video I posted was a couple, a couple weeks ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. And still like it just every week I'm getting a lot of size. So it'll be fun to post a three month transformation. Um, and then hopefully by the end of the year, maybe another 10 pounds and then I'll pretty much be where I want to be. Dude, I think at the end of the year, I'll be back to where I want to be. I don't want to be quite as big as I was. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little, I was getting a little obsessive. I was, again, I was putting my physique above my health, I yep. guess. Yep. 
Um, so I'm trying to be a little more balanced about that. But yeah, so the goal is by the end of the year to be exactly where I want to be, which I think I'm going to I'm going to make that goal. Yeah. So like, what are you, uh, uh, for the people out there, cause I know they're going to ask like uh, approximately how many calories you're consuming right now yeah, yeah. Your routine at the moment. Yeah. So right now it's averaging actually, let me do the math to get this right. So basically I have these, um, ch cheat days. They're not cheat days cause they're planned cheat days is a silly word, I guess for that, but people can think of them as cheat days, 4,200 calories two times a week. So like actually Today, I actually, uh, some I, Sunday, um, Wednesdays, I usually do these high calorie days. Didn't do it yesterday. I was, I was actually doing like a mini meditation retreat. Um, so I didn't have a cheat day because I just wanted to focus on that. But um, so I'm actually doing it today, which I'm excited for. 4,200 calories twice a week. And then am I having about 3,000 calories the other five days? So what's this? 15,000. So yeah, that's average. Okay. So that's averaging. Usually I go a little above it too. I'll be honest, like just cause I'm trying to gain size, I won't be too strict with it. And I might like, I definitely err on the side of go eating more. So let's say I'm eating about 3,400 calories a day on average. Um, but it's varied, right? I'll have the high calorie days and the low calorie days because that's, um, like cycling the, the carbs and the calories, right? That really keeps your metabolism high. It keeps your, your nutrient partitioning better, which essentially means, um, you know, the nutrients are going to be going towards where they're supposed to be going, like muscle and glycogen rather than fat. Yep. Um, yeah, it keeps your metabolism high. It keeps your leptin levels high. Uh, your hunger down, right? When you have those big refeed days, it keeps your hunger down, which mm -hmm. I needed, right? I'm good now. Like my hunger is... I'm so stoked where my relationship with food is right now. It's pretty perfect. Um, but um, at the start, obviously, I was I was so hungry, you know, like all the time, right? And so those high calorie days are good to keep the hunger down. So that's pretty much the diet. I'm eating a, a, a whole foods vegan diet. Like I'm not. It's not a bodybuilding diet per se. Um, well, it, it definitely could be used as a body. It's not the standard bodybuilding diet. You know, I'm eating. I'm only eating about 120 grams of protein. But based on the research you want, I mean, ideally it, it doesn't really help to go above like 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound body weight. I'm 185. So what, I mean, it, that's, uh, that's in that range. Right. Um, so yeah. And again, that's like plus I'm bulking. So you need less protein when you're bulking. Um, and so, yeah, not eating a crazy amount of protein. I'm going more for health. It's really just a whole foods vegan diet. So I basically eat um, I have chia seeds, pumpkin seeds for my like fats and, and some vegan omega threes. And then for my carbs, it's really just a shit ton of sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I've, I've really been enjoying purple sweet potatoes. If you cook, people don't know this dude. And it has, you have to cook them at a high temperature. You have to cook them at like 450 degrees in the oven. Dude, if you cook sweet potatoes at 450 degrees in the oven, they like they caramelize like the, the, the sweetness comes out. They taste so good. It's like mm -hmm. freaking candy. Yeah. It's crazy. So like I have a ton of sweet potatoes. I mean, like it, it's a ridiculous amount of sweet potatoes. Like I'm having like four kilograms of sweet potatoes today yeah. on my, on my cheat day. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, and then sometimes like some fruit, some like watermelon and cantaloupe. I have a newfound love for watermelon. Cause I was like my, like I have like an emotional relationship with it. Cause it was my first meal after the 40 day fast. Um, and then, um, uh, sometimes I'll have like a little bit of tempeh, fermented mm -hmm. soy, fermented soybeans for some protein. Um, the firm that that's like the healthiest form of like soy is like the fermented kind. Yep. Um, and that's that's pretty much that's pretty much all I'll really eat every day. Yeah. Um, on my cheat days, I really just have like more sweet potatoes. Um, sometimes I switch it up. Like I'm not too strict about it. Like I I, I might have a chipotle or chipotle one day or something like that. You know. Mm -hmm. But um. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not some sort of bodybuilding diet at all. It's just like a very healthy vegan diet, but still with an adequate amount of protein. To be honest, like if I wasn't worried about my physique at all, mm -hmm. I'd be getting even less protein, yeah. right? I'm, I'm like people just to survive, just to be a healthy individual, you need so much less protein than you think. But I actually want to gain size back. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting that much protein, like an adequate amount of protein. So that's my diet. Workout, mm -hmm. um, I'm doing an upper body, lower body split. Yep. So, and I'm hardcore, like 
it, it's 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 more volume than I've really ever done before. Just because, mm -hmm. like, it's fun, like gaining back the size so quickly. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'll do. I, I do. I have this uh, set of resistance bands. It's called the X three bar. It's a bar and then a resistance band that you can attach the bar. And so it, it's so easy to do. I don't like. I'll do. I literally do twelve sets of this just chilling like of this bench press thing with the x3 bar while yep. i'm just chilling around every day and then i'll also do workouts in the gym i mean i'll do normal chest press rows um you know tricep extensions bicep curls like in the gym as well in my apartment gym so i'm doing like really high volume um but i'm i'm, I'm recovering just fine i'm eating a ton so i can get away with it mm -hmm. and yeah i'm just trying to optimize uh like the the, the rebound you know yeah, yeah absolutely. and yeah, and it's been working out well. Like I've been having a lot of fun with it, and I've been. It's really in the past few weeks. It kind of, it kind of started out like, like kind of, not slow, but slower than you would think because the body is like still so used to starving. It's like, oh shit, I don't know if I want to put on a bunch of muscle because I need to stay light so I I I don't burn up a bunch of energy, you know. But so after it got like I guess used to it. Like I, I saw the gains. The gains were like this. The gains, like, oh, it was a lot of gains, right? But all of a sudden, they started, they started going up, you know, because mo, a lot of times you would think that gains, they like, uh, it's like a logarithmic thing, right? Yeah. But my gains, like, they started going up the start, but then started going up even faster, like a couple weeks ago. I was like, what? Like, I'm not, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say faster, like per weight, but proportional to what I would imagine or, or how I looked in the mirror. I, I don't know. Um, they just, yeah, I don't know. So that was cool, but I'm sure they'll slow down eventually, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been fun so far. So I'll say that. So guys start getting your questions in here. Cause blog talk radio is giving me a headache. So it's, it's as usual it acts up, but, uh, we'll start answering some questions now. Uh, to dare ask here, why do you think most fitness experts don't recommend a bro split? Connor, I'll let you, uh, tackle that one first. Uh, cause most fitness experts know that, um, the average person that they're coaching is, is natural, yes. right? Yes. And bro splits, bro splits don't work that well for natural athletes simply because protein synthesis lasts yeah. like 24. It's usually yep. probably only 20, 24. Oh. If you work out a little harder, like 24 to 48 hours yep. for a natural lifter, that's why ideally um, I mean, you would be doing push pull legs where you work everything out every third day, or you would be doing like upper body, lower body split where you work everything out like every other day, because that's how long protein synthesis lasts in, in natural athletes. It's like 24 to 48 hours. So if you're doing a bro split and working out everything once per week, you're just missing out on a lot of opportunity. I mean, you're, you're getting the protein synthesis for the next maybe couple days afterwards, but then you're wasting that the whole rest of the week, not working out. Absolutely. Right. So you're not getting enough frequency. And so that's why they recommend it, because if you're natural, that's what you should be doing. Like that's yeah, that's where it's at. One thousand percent. And to answer well, my thing, like, yeah, guys, you got to understand bro splits came from like old bodybuilding magazines where bodybuilders would do like 50 sets per body part once per week. And they were able to do that kind of volume because they were enhanced and they were able to recover versus a natural. You want to maximize muscle protein synthesis, which is like on at the highest level, you might get 72 hours out of it, but reality is more like 48, like Connor was saying. So by getting the frequency in, you're able to get more volume in, therefore more better quality volume. And then you're going to be, you're going to basically give yourself more chances to stimulate growth. So that's why bro splits for natural athletes typically isn't optimal. So just like Connor was saying, you either want to do a full body routine, uh, push pull legs or like an upper body, lower body split and just alternate. Um, Someone asked here, uh, let's see here. I, I just had it. Someone asked, what was the first thing you ate right after you fasted? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I have a, um, Shout out I actually have a, a video about it. It was, um, yeah, you can go watch it. I, I, I think it's called my first meal after my 40 day fast or something. It was watermelon. Um, it was watermelon because you got to be careful when you refeed after a 40 day fast. Cause if you eat stuff, I mean, your digestive system like, like shuts off. Right. And so you have to introduce food very slowly. If you eat stuff, if you introduce too much too quickly, you literally die. So you have to you have to be careful. And fruit like that is the best thing you can get. I mean, essentially, it's 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 a liquid. I mean, you chew it up, it turns into a liquid, and you digest it very easily. So yeah, watermelon. I had cantaloupe after that the same day, and yeah, it was oh man, 
it was one of the most incredible experiences to be honest like in my life dude that that shit tasted so good i mean it was yeah. like a it was like a full body like orgasm from eating that shit it was mm -hmm. crazy so yeah it was it was i really enjoyed that yeah it was just straight watermelon like nothing else Nah, just straight watermelon dude i don't even know if it was a good watermelon like you know some watermelons are shit they're like not sweet at all and then some are really sweet looking back on it i have a feeling like it, it was a probably a really mediocre watermelon but damn dude for me that shit tasted so good i mean after not having an ounce of food for 40 days and then having that sweetness dude it was so good it was so good yeah no that's uh I would imagine, dude, you're going to definitely have like a whole newfound appreciation for food, you know, for sure. Uh, yeah. Connor asked, would you recommend creatine? What's your take on creatine? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, sure, dude. I actually don't take creatine right now. Um, just, you know, I, I might hop back on it. I, the, I, I kind of stopped doing it. At first, I didn't wasn't even sure if it's vegan or not. It, it depends on, on how they make it, I guess. And so there's that. You can definitely get some that are the creatine that's definitely vegan. Um, but also, like, uh, the other thing, it, it really proportionally to like testosterone, it really increases DHT a lot, which for hair loss isn't good. And I've struggled with that since forever. Um, yeah, so you can show studies like they put people on creatine, increase DHT by like 50%, which is a ton. Now, for gains, it's great. Like, for great. It's just like, if you're struggling with hair loss, it, it's not going to help for sure. Um, and so it, it was kind of those two things why I kind of hopped off it. Also, I was like, I was a little less interested in the physique, but I might hop back on it, dude, just to really max out the max physique. We'll see. Right now. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see. Also, yeah, who knows? Also, I was thinking about doing a video, just shaving my head for like a YouTube video and just see, <laughs> like, it's just like practicing for like one day if I actually do go like get to the point where I do need to like shave my head and go bald, like kind of seeing, like getting used to it and seeing if I'd like be cool with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was thinking like, if that were the case, I'd definitely hop on it. Um, but like for anyone, that, that's the only reason why you shouldn't, like if you're worried about those things, yep. you should be on it uh, if that is not the case. Cause it's dope. It's like the best supplement that you can get. You're going to notice the results very very quickly like if you, if you load, it works too like let's just yeah exactly, yeah the most widely researched sports supplement so like it, it definitely works guys it's just that you have to use it appropriately and you got to use it every day it's because you got to be consistent about it yeah you want to load that shit dude like if you've never taken it before you want to take like 20 grams or some shit every day for a few days and then you can cut down to like five after your body gets saturated with it but dude yeah. after that after you load that shit in three days you're gonna notice i mean you're you will notice uh, there's like a very small percentage of people that are apparently creatine non-responders that don't, but most people, um, they, you're going to see like a 20% increase in your strength in the gym. Like I noted like three days, dude, I go into the gym and I'm literally like 30%, 20, 30% stronger. So I was like, what the fuck? It was crazy. Yeah. And so it also water, uh, more water in the muscle. You're going to look bigger. Um, you're going to be better. stronger. You're going to put on more gains. Like, yeah, it's, it's a dope supplement. Uh, Ryan Acevedo asks, do you guys check your hormone levels, like T levels, et cetera? Um, yeah, I have before for sure. Um, actually, I, yeah, I did it for a YouTube video once. Um, it's, I think it's called Getting My Testosterone Levels Checked. It, I, it, I mean, it was a sponsored video. Um, um, this company just had me, uh, like, it's one of those things you order online and you send in and you can just see the results online, so it's super easy. Mm -hmm. um, so I've done that. That's really the only time I did, and it was really just for the the YouTube promo. But I would recommend it, like especially if you're if you're really changing something up, you know, and you're not sure how it's gonna affect, whether it be like I don't know, you're on some medication or some new lifestyle change, something, you know, and you want to see how it affects your T levels. Like, yeah, you should get that shit tested. I mean, obviously, it's 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 a little expensive. Just I mean, whatever in your budget, man. Yeah, like I would definitely get it tested. Um, it's like a lot of people ask me why I didn't get it tested after the 40 day fast. It's cause like, I, I know where it was at. Like, I know yeah. that it just plummeted to like nothing. You know what I mean? For sure. And you know, I, like if I have a question about it, if like, if I'm like not making gains or maybe I'm feeling a little, a little fat or whatever. And I'm like, Hmm, I wonder if this is because of testosterone or am I just eating too much or whatever? If I don't know, if I'm curious, yeah, I'll get that shit checked, you know? But for the most part, I've been doing this fitness stuff for so long i just have a good idea of where everything's at like i could you know i i probably could guess my testosterone level 
within a hundred nanograms per deciliter, you know? Yeah. So, but if you're, if you're not like that, if you're curious about like, like what's the issue with my progress then yeah, might as well. It can't hurt. Yep. Okay. So, uh, and guys, we'll stay on the air for about another five minutes or so and answer some more questions. Uh, but Connor's a busy man. He's got some things to do. Uh, so, uh, Solid Scorpion asks, what's your one rep max on the bench, squat, deadlift, OHP, and barbell row? I'll let, I'll let Connor take that one. Go ahead. Yeah, I've never done it, dude. Like, there's no, there's no point. For what I've been trying to do my whole life, I've been trying to lift weights to look good. Yep. Um, I've just never one rep max. Like, I can tell you at my prime – um, I remember, I forgot what it was. I, I calculated it cause I did three reps at a really heavy weight. I did like three reps and based on what I did for three reps, you can kind of calculate what your one rep max was. And for bench, it was around 345, I guess. But, um, squat deadlift over at, I have no idea. Like I have absolutely no idea. I don't, I didn't even know people, uh, um, one rep max on barbell row. That sounds so dangerous. Like mm -hmm. it sounds like you're going to break your back. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't even know what is the, like, I can't even imagine someone trying to do that, yeah. but, um, yeah, I, I've just, I've never, I've never really done it and I don't care at all. I don't care about my strength because in every normal day-to-day -day life, what I do, the most athletic thing that I'm going to do is golf. And that is more about, that's more about technique and like rotational sure. power. It's not about like, yeah, that's not really about strength. Like for day-to-day -day life, I don't need strength. Like, I mean, I have more than enough. Like if you go to the gym and you're a healthy person, you have more than enough strength for day-to-day -day life. Like what are you going to do? Like pick up your freaking cereal box out of the cupboard, you know? Like, so I'm just not concerned about strength that much. Yeah. Um, so I just haven't done it. I haven't done any of those one rep maxes. I, I agree with that as well. Guys, if you're trying to lift for aesthetics to look good naked, like – you're going to have to base your training around hypertrophy based training. And the beauty with hypertrophy is strength isn't all, like getting stronger, like working off percentages, et cetera. That could be a byproduct of hypertrophy, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's required. You can get better in other ways, whether you're doing more volume, more reps, better technique, et cetera. Like the gauge to measure progress with hypertrophy is much wider than like, oh, I'm a powerlifter. I need to hit this number because it's strength specific. So understand that you can get uh, build muscle through many different ways. And quite frankly, I think for like safety reasons, maximizing volume and like minimizing risk and injury, it's actually better to work with a little bit lighter loads from that practicality range of six to 15, though you can build muscle with 30 reps as we've seen from Brad Schoenfeld or even lower than six. But if you want to be that have that nice in between where you're like not, not risking injury, like, yeah, man, you want to stay away from like one rep max stuff. So we got another super chat here. This one's a good question. What made you switch over to a whole food plant-based diet, Connor, from Jason Bravo with the 499 Super Chat? Thank you. It, it's weird, man. It was just like – it was kind of just a natural thing that I thought that I should do. Um, you'll you'll find – like um, a lot of people think it is definitely tied into the whole spiritual thing, but it wasn't like – it wasn't like, oh, I want to be spiritual, so I'm going to have this uh, whole foods plant-based diet or whatever. It was really just like a feeling that I was like, I should, I should try this out. Part of it, I've struggled. I did a YouTube video on this. I, I, I've struggled. I don't anymore, which is dope. But I used to struggle with this uh, recurrent bacterial infection called uh, MRSA, like methicillin resistant staph, uh, staph aureus. Um, and I, my whole life, I've been trying to like figure that shit out because you can go to the doctor, get antibiotics, but it just comes back like it. They, the doctor literally can't do anything for you. And so I, I tried like literally everything under the sun, dude. I mean, I would, I like bathe and bleach and shit like crazy shit. And, um, I kind of, the more research I did, I found that these things like your gut microbiome can have a huge effect on not only the bacteria that's in your gut. I mean, obviously that makes sense, but on the bacteria that's in your skin too. And so uh, I've realized that kind of like vegans have a completely different gut microbiome than like meat eaters. Right. Yep. And like a, a lot healthier one too, because it, the bacteria that feed off plants are much different than the bacteria that feed off like meat. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I tried that out and that along with an, a, a couple other things really cured that for the first time, in like 15 years, which is crazy. Um, so that was one reason, but then, yeah, the other reason, I mean, it, I think that was kind of the driving force behind it. Also, I was like, you know what? I, I was on the keto diet for a while because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was just on like a sickle keto diet. I was like, it'd be fun to add in carbs. 
I might have like, I don't know, vegan, you're going to eat a lot of carbs. Yep. So it's kind of a combination of that. But then I realized all the benefits, like after I got into it, um, like uh, spiritual benefits and also like, I mean, just like health benefits in general, like I felt a lot better. But I think the main thing that made me like switch, and again, this was like many months ago, this is like the beginning of the year, or like spring or something like that, was really just, um, yeah, for the gut health, like to cure my freaking like staff shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Ethan Edwards asked, Myron Gaines, carnivore, um, quite <laughs> – Listen, so I want to, I'll just put this out there and I want to take, get your take on it too, uh, Connor. I, th- I have an idea of what you, you're going to feel about this. But guys, there's no like superior like diet. The best diet is the one that you can stick to the most. So like if you enjoy carnivore, which I don't personally advocate, I kind of, I'm not a fan of that because you're not eating vegetables and getting fruits in and stuff like that. You're just eating straight meat and fat. Uh, if you want to do it, that's fine. But understand that you probably want to have a balanced diet where you're consuming vegetables as well. So that's why I'm not a big fan of carnivore. You're better off probably doing something with keto. But the best diet is the one that you can adhere to, especially if you're like trying to lose weight, whatever it may be. Because if you can't stick to it, you ain't going to lose weight. So, uh, Connor, what's your thoughts on carnivore? Yeah, that's the thing. So it's like if you're purely after like fitness, right, gaining muscle, losing weight. Um, yeah, I mean, the best diet is, is the one that you can stick to if that's your the only thing that you care about. But um, if you're concerned with health, um, I, I don't think there's one – best diet but we we know that for sure like eating mostly you know whole plant foods you there's enough research out there that that's a pretty common consensus that that's going to be like the the best you know i mean probably the most popular diet out there um that is considered healthy is like the mediterranean diet and that's a lot of like whole plant foods and then they have a little bit of fish and other things as well um i don't even think that that's like the healthiest I, I think that like that's going in the right direction, I guess. Carnivore, um, I don't like based on like the research there's, and that's also the thing is there's not a lot of research about the carnivore diet and especially yep. there's zero long-term research about it. Yeah. Right. That's the thing is like a lot of people, I think the reason why they cure health issue or issues is because it's a, an elimination diet. So you're cutting out like all the bad shit. The calorie right? that, that does a lot of the work too. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, in terms of fitness, like, yeah, it, you're gonna, it's, it's literally just one food. It's like meat. You're going to, your palate's going to get fatigued very easily. You're going to eat a lot less, like obviously for weight loss. Yeah, for sure. For overall health, I don't think it's the healthiest, but if you're just going for weight loss, uh, yeah, I mean, do it. Like just be wary that it, it has not been studied over a long period of time. And I doubt that it's healthy for a long <laughs> yeah. period of time. Facts. And a lot of people that like do carnivore for a while, they, like they get high cholesterol, a bunch of BS. So yeah. Um, Tash said with the question, sorry if you answered already, but uh, do you do any forms of martial arts slash combat training, Connor? I don't. Um, no, I was, um, I was kind of for a while thinking of getting into, um, it's called like uh, Qi or Qigong, which is, mm-hmm kind of a eastern way of kind of moving the energy like the the chi energy around uh your body it's kind of um it would be kind of closely related to like tai chi you know Mm -hmm. because that's yeah from a a spiritual standpoint that could could have like a lot of benefits so if anything i would get into that more Mm -hmm. um i have i was dabbling in that a very very little but um in terms of martial arts training like i i think i did a semester of Taekwondo in college, actually, as this, a, everyone had to take like a physical class or whatever. So I did that. But other than that, um, nah, not, not too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what else? Uh, so Connor, where can the people find you, man? Uh, your YouTube channel, uh, any other content you might put out, Instagram, everything. Can you put your stuff, uh, put your stuff out there to the people? Yeah, man. I mean, wherever there's a search bar, dude, you can probably just type in Connor Murphy and uh, have fun with whatever the hell comes up. I mean, <laughs> you can type, I would just, yeah, type in my name on YouTube. I have three channels, Connor Murphy, Connor Murphy Vlogs, and Connor Murphy Talks. Then on Instagram and Connor Murphy Official. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can find all my other social media links from there somehow. If you look hard enough, I'm sure you guys can can figure it out. Um, yeah, check out my like YouTube descriptions for all my links to shit. Yeah. Yeah, man, guys go definitely go check out Connor on his, uh, original channel, Connor Murphy, and then Connor Murphy speaks where that's the, the more spiritual side 
um, both great content. And obviously the, the, the prank channel stuff is fun. You guys should go back and look at some of the stuff that he was doing in Austin. Uh, the true Chad right here. Um, yeah. guys, <laughs> I mean, I, I still do it too. Like I do both. Like there's no reason why. Yeah, you just put out a video about OnlyFans, right? Didn't you just uh, like uh, talk about your last video real quick? Because I saw, I yeah, saw man, it. subscribe to my OnlyFans. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be posting on there. To be honest, it, it's just like another a business I want to I want to start. Um, it, it's just so popping right now. I just kind of want to capitalize on it. I don't know what I'm going to be posting. It honestly, it depends who the fans are that are going to pay for shit. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Like, I have no problem. I think like I, it's it's such some societal bullshit where people are like like posting uh like erotic pictures or whatever there's such a especially in the bodybuilding world like it's called like gay for pay and there's this huge stigma oh, yeah. behind it <laughs> it's, it's just so it's it's such bullshit like social conditioning like dude why the fuck not like i have no problem posting like some a, a little more risque photos if both parties are like benefiting like i'm making money and they're getting whatever they want out of it so it's like i don't give a fuck dude like i just want maybe dude maybe before this whole spiritual awakening i would care a little bit but i'm to the point where like no that's bullshit dude like the literally the only thing that would be holding me back was what other people think yeah. right there's there's nothing yeah i don't know society is like so fucked it's like how can two people benefit from something and then people call it bad yet there's all this other bullshit going on in the world where People, I, I don't know. So I, I don't, but then again, I'm not saying I'm going to post nudes on there. I probably won't <laughs> like to yeah. be honest, but it, it really all depends on who, who shows up to only fans, you know? So yeah, we'll see. That's what it's about. So that's yeah, it's right now. So that's definitely going to be uh very interesting. And I know you just missed, shot a YouTube video where you were asking girls like, Hey, jump on my only fans. So I, I'm definitely going to check that one out. Cause I saw that on the, in the, you'll see right now. I've just really posted like uh I mean, geez, it's just like normal pictures of me throughout the day just to throw some stuff on there. The exclusive stuff, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. We'll see who shows up on OnlyFans. Hey, guys, well, you heard it here. Get on <laughs> Connor Murphy's OnlyFans. Hell guys, yeah. Thank you for, for joining us. Uh, with me, guys, very simple. Just get on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Fresh Fit. Me and my boy, Fresh Prince CEO, teaching you guys contemporary dating habits to make you successful with women in the modern day uh definitely check that out and go subscribe to connor murphy's you both youtube channels connor murphy and connor murphy speaks get on his instagram uh check out his stuff on there and if you guys want to see how to build a good instagram definitely check out his instagram you guys heard it earlier you know how he was doing well with it to get the ladies but and get on his only fans too man why not hell Just, yeah go for it it's free you can get like you can't get the exclusive stuff but you can get on the page you can subscribe for free and get some yeah. shit from it so go for it dude it, it's better support him than some bimbo that doesn't care about you so yeah hell yeah <laughs> so guys we'll catch you on the next one tonight we're going to do the end of game podcast at 10 p.m with lucario we'll catch you guys on the next show peace